Join my damn tell ya. Nah, 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 nah. Yo, welcome to another episode of PS Panic Room. You know how we do every week. We get fly and flashy, and this week ain't no different. It's actually fly and flashiest this week right here. But let me get this out of my way. Let me read these comments. You know, I gotta read the comments. You know, my crew getting these comments to see what y'all talking about. All right. Let's talk about this. Is the me and George Wallace again for the second time. Shout out to my man George Wallace. He killed it. Um it's just, it's, just, it's just cool messing with George. All right. Duval DH says, the chemistry between Wallace and Pierre is crazy. They could make a lot of money together. Okay, well, then let's look at it. Let's try making money together. <laughs> but um, I love George Wallace, man. Something about when we get down, we start talking, it just feels natural between me and him. You know, it's just like father and great. It's like, it's like, it's like son and great granddad. That's <laughs> He's going to kill me for that. <laughs> All right. On the How I Met, this one, How I Met Tasha Smith. Um, Sean Jackson says, great story, P. Keep stories coming. Really enjoy them. Thank you very much. It, it's, it's in my book, uh, P. Uh, what is it? My 100 Homies and Phonies of Hollywood. I talk about all the celebrities that I met, who was cool, what. And I tell you the story about uh, how I met Tasha Smith. So a lot of other stories. So check it out. Appreciate it. All right, from the Dion Cole. When Dion Cole surprised me, I was shooting a thing called Five for Five. He was in town in Atlanta. He, he, he popped in. I really appreciate it. He stopped, stopped in. Three Alarm 24 7 says, I mess with Pierre. He's fun to watch and much respect for creating an avenue where we can thrive. Let's support and celebrate this man on the highest level, people. <laughs> I appreciate that. I appreciate that. Uh, all right, you heard the snickling and snackling and shit up in here. You know who I got. You already saw the list. You see, you see, you see the title. You know who I got here. I got what I'm considered. Uh, I'm going to go with the queen of comedy, okay? Because I know that. You know, it's funny. We're going to get into it. Give it up for the one and only. Miss Linnell. Yeah. 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 I'm talking about. Lord, first of all, thank you for coming. Finally, right? I, 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 some year, damn, I think I started this two years ago. Damn, you're about the first person I asked, and <laughs> you finally got it. But you've been busy. And let me tell you something. I didn't realize how busy your career was. And I'm being dead serious. No, a lot of people don't. You know, I know you, Linnell. We travel, but I don't know you. And when right. I started doing research, I'm going to be honest. It was exhausting. I was like, and I'm going to tell you right now, I'm not going to talk about everything in her career. Damn, you talk about it. You missed this part. You missed, there's a lot of shit I'm going to miss, okay? She got too much shit to talk about to get it all in in this situation. Um, so some, some stuff I didn't know. First of all, I knew this kind of, but I didn't. You from Arkansas? Raised in Arkansas? Born in Arkansas. Born. Not raised in Arkansas. Born in Arkansas, raised in the Bay Area. Okay, when you say raised, so when you leave um, the Bay Area? Uh, when I was two months old. Oh, okay, okay. But I go back. I still right. have a lot of relatives there, and we have our family reunion every two years. Okay. So, obviously, we weren't able to have one for the last two years. Right. So, it's really been four years right. since some of us all got together, so we just had one in August. And I was born right. in my grandfather's house there. We have land there. So. Right, right, right. So, going back... Could you imagine what difference you would have been if you were raised in Arkansas? Because the Bay is whole, totally different. I see, I see the Bay with you, okay? Mm -hmm. I wonder what it would have been like if, if, if Miss Lunell would have been raised in Arkansas. I shudder, shudder to think. <laughs> okay, we got, I got Arkansas fans, okay? Yeah, I mean, I, 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 Damn, clearly yeah. I go there, <laughs> but I shudder to think just based upon where I was born. I right. was born in a really rural town called Tallette, Arkansas. That's rural. And if you don't get, it, yeah, we don't right. even have police station. We regulate ourselves. You work it out yourself. That's right. Ooh. And it's hardly ever had any white people ever live there. Okay. It's not on the map, but it is on a map of black townships and settlements, right. if you've ever right. seen that. Right. So, but you know, I think, I mean, I, you know, there's no telling right. because you can speculate and say, Oh, I'd probably be living, you know, in a trailer and got five kids. Right, right. Or you can think of it like maybe I would still be doing what I was doing if this is what God had planned for okay, me. Okay. Maybe some kind of way I would have made it out anyway. But I definitely got out. Got yeah, 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 yeah. You should be thankful. <clears throat> now, now, are you all right with your saying your age? Because I think you're in your 60s, right? I mean, no, I'm not all right with okay. it. All right, then you're 22. But it's clearly uh -oh. Googleable, so, you know, it's been put out there since. 
Well, the, the, the last two <laughs> weeks, a lot. I'm right. Sixty-three years old. Okay. Well, young. We'll, we'll use that. Yeah, because I mean, you, yeah. because you know, this dying young thing is not my bag. I know that's right. I don't want to burn out and be dead at you know in the 50s. thirty-two years old or, or the fifties. No, or the twenties. A lot, of, a lot of our friends died in the 50s, man. Yeah, a lot I of communities have lost in the, got out of here in the 50s. The point I'm saying, because if, you, if you're, 63, uh, you're 63, you came up during a little bit of the, the, the Black Panther era, right? I mean, absolutely. Right. From right. Oakland? Right. I learned, yes, absolutely. I, got a, I was just in my little Black Panther coloring book today right. because I was going to give it to my great niece. <clears throat> Excuse me. And it has stuff in there like a maze. You know how you right. draw and go through a maze? And it said, when delivering groceries to the community, right. watch out for dirty cops. <laughs> it says stuff like that in the Black Panther. Now, did you, did you get a chance to meet any of the bigger people in the Black Panther? Like Stokely? Or, uh, um, no, hmm. I didn't meet him. And my goal was always to meet Angela Davis. And oh, I never right. really met her yet, right. but it's not over. Right. Is she back my, from Cuba? Uh, well, I'm not, a, you know, at liberty oh. to say. Oh, okay, okay. Right, my but, um, and I think that was another sister, Asada Shakur, I think, that's actually in, in Cuba. But, but no, I, okay, I mean, I mean, 100%, but she went, she went away from America. She had to go away. She was right. on the FBI most wanted. Right, right. But anyway, um, uh, my mother worked on Huey Newton when he had got shot before because he went to Highland Hospital. Okay. My mother worked in Highland Hospital. And just uh, some of the Panther Cubs, you right, know. Sure. Um, and I know Fred Hampton Jr. Okay. And stuff like that. So um, I didn't meet the people I would have loved to meet. Right. But I was very aware of them for sure. Do, do you? Do people in Oakland like yourself hold like a affinity to the Black Panthers even today? Like saying we want to keep pushing it without verbalizing much. You know. You know what I'm saying? Like people of a certain age do. Right. From Oakland. Right. For sure, because what they stood for and what people tried to present them as is mm -hmm. two different things. There you go. <laughs> oh, okay, okay. Well, um, all right. So let's get into some things. You, um, you worked at a at a bank. We know about that situation. Several banks. Yeah. Well. It, and savings and loans. Okay. Okay. Well, you. you um, I had a back. It's, it's, it's safe to say I had a background in banking. Well, uh, background and foreground. Yeah. Background. Yeah. 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 Pre, pre felony right. and. Foreground after the felony. Well, okay. <laughs> All right. So, what made you think you can get away with that? Oh, I did get away with it. I did, mm -hmm. But you did. You went to jail for. Yeah, for but months. the thing about it is, you have a ten year. The statute of limitation is ten years. If I had taken less money, it would have been a misdemeanor and not oh. a felony, and I literally would have got away with it because I didn't get busted till about twelve years later. Oh. It's the amount of money that I took that made it a felony. And felonies, you can get arrested for a felony at 83 years old. So. Oh, oh, oh. Can, can we tell how much you took? $50,000. Damn! And that, that was and, back then, too. Yeah. Shit. So that was like $150,000. What made you, what, what, what <coughs> you think you could do that? I'm going to tell, you, you, tell you why what I did fuck? it. Being that I had an extensive background in banking. Okay. Working at, I think it was West Coast, I don't know. It was some bank that I was working at on Long Beach Boulevard in Long Beach. Okay. I had been through everything. I had been new accounts. I had been bookkeeper. I had been, I'd been everything, so I knew everything about the bank. I was taking them off before I stole the money, quite frankly. Wow. Doing some <laughs> other little capers. But the tellers are the greeters of the bank. Okay. Sure. They're the people who know the customers better than anybody. I was a bank teller. Okay, so you know that. Mm -hmm. you, we are the ones who establish relationships with the customers. Okay. And after working, and, and I knew that this particular bank was going to go out of business because of the practices that they were doing and a little stuff. I said, this, this bank's going to go out of business. Number one, mm -hmm. red light. Then when I got my paycheck, the amount of money that it was, and the amount of money that I was exposed to. Oh, I know that's right. Was another red light. And then I also started working in the vault. Ooh. But you can't go in the vault alone. You have to go in the vault right. with somebody else. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But don't turn your head, bitch. Ooh. Because now I got 50 racks in my bra. All of a sudden, the Oakland. I just got, the, the check pissed me off. 
the, the thought that the bank was going to go out, which it did, go right, out of right. business. A lot of the savings and loans were going out of business around the Yeah, time. and yeah. I think mm-hmm. it was West Coast Federal mm-hmm. Savings, if I'm, not, if I'm not mistaken. But, you know, the fact that the check was trash, mm-hmm. the fact that um, uh, I, I saw this bank going under, I saw it. Mm-hmm. And the fact that I was just, you know, kind of risky right. at that time in my life. And those three things added up to me taking the money. So you were the first set it off. You could say okay. that. Okay. Which, 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 which one were you? Which one were you? Queen Latif? I was no? Vivica. Fuck Viv- you oh, mean. Okay. Ooh, that's right. Vivica. Okay. <laughs> I was Vivica. Fuck <laughs> you mean. I love it. I love it. Well, all right. But so, I didn't use any weapons, okay? Oh. Anti-weapon. I know that's right. I know that's right. Well, okay. So let's go with, you started doing comedy, and I remember it. You went to a place called, somebody went to me around here, Sweet Jimmy's. Don't act like you don't remember Sweet Jimmy's, girl. I had been doing comedy way before that. Before Sweet Jimmy's? You were pupping Sweet Jimmy's. Before I robbed the bank, let me see, or was it after? I actually, the first time I went on stage was at a place in Long Beach called Miss Wiz. I remember. I remember and the wow. first comedian that I met on the first night I ever did stand up yeah. comedy was Robin Harris. Really? I met Robin, the minute I stepped off stage, on the first night I ever did stand up, he came up to me and he said, you use a funny little bitch. This is the first day I ever did stand up. I was like, thank you. And you are, he said, my name is Robert Harris. I got this club. Right. And he gave me a card, which I still have at the house laminated oh, now. Nice. It says Robin Harris, actor, comedian, MC. And it had his mother's phone number on it. Wow. Mm-hmm. At a 213 number. That's old school. Yeah. And then on the back, I had written the address to the comedy act okay. that he gave me. He gave you, right. Then I went down there, and that's when I met like the DLs and the Jamies mm. and Vince D's and Courtney G's. Right, and right, sure. Rest in all that right. stuff. But, hold <coughs> it, but, but then you went back to Sweet Jimmy. How'd you get to Sweet Jimmy's? Because, well, I'll tell you why I'm Because that. it took me three times to move to LA to make it stick. Okay. And then I was also on the run. So I had went back to Oakland. And when I went back to Oakland, I resumed, you know, I, I, right. I was able to get, I was able to do comedy in friends of mine's clubs, and then the word got out, and then I was booked in almost all the clubs. Okay. Like, I could do four clubs in a week in Oakland, and that was, like, unheard of. For the amount of comics that were there, and I was the, the motherfucker that was right. hosting all the rooms. I remember, some people that might remember this, the reason I'm saying this, Sweet Jimmy, is because... You work with Rex Garvin, who you did the Ricky Lake show. Where they do that at? Well, let me tell you, she was on the Ricky Lake show. Rex Garvin was supposed to be a drunk husband or boyfriend or whatever, who wasn't taking care of the kid and all that. You were like, well, how? Am I saying it correctly? Kind of. First of all, nobody uh, even knows who Rex Garvin is anymore. But okay, well, he's a comic right. that we we know. Right, we know, right. right. And um, <laughs> Rex was a. Uh, before reality shows, shows and stuff, mm-hmm. it was like talk shows was a right. big thing. And Rex was a talk show appearance addict. Okay. He had done several talk shows. Okay. And he approached me. <laughs> right, 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 right. And asked me would I go on Ricky Lake with him and say that we was together and that we right. had, had a baby. baby. Yep. Because I was pregnant when I went on the first time. You were really pregnant? I was really pregnant. Oh, snap. Okay. With, with Dana Garrett's baby. That's okay. my baby daddy. He was comic in the Bay Area, too. And so I did it. And then, right, right, right. Five, then they had us back after I had the baby. And I brought the real baby daddy and all this stuff. Oh, wow. Well, I remember I remember coming to your it's house crazy. or your apartment. So remember that? I'm going to tell you. I came to a house that you were damn near in the attic. Do you remember what I was uh, in Oakland? In Oakland, yeah. Oh, I was remember in the attic. Remember that? I came there. Well, no, that was, I, that's why I got pregnant in that attic. <laughs> we was in that motherfucker like this. this I shit. know. And you know who used to be in there with me a lot? Who? Rodney Winfield. Oh my! I love Charlotte. That's my man. Rodney right Winfield used to come up in that motherfucker yeah. and be there. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And so uh, I got pre- pregnant in that. You, attic. you had no choice. Shit. I drove my daughter by there this Thanksgiving and showed her where I got pregnant at. Really? Yeah. And uh, yeah, you should, okay, if, if you yeah, remember yeah. that, you uh, was come, there. I, I hung with you. You Hold on, you were not only the set it off Vivica Fox, you also the first Anne Frank, the black Anne Frank. <laughs> 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 you all up in the attic and shit, what the? I wasn't hiding from the Germans, though. 
<laughs> yeah. That's where I can afford to live. Oh, okay. So, so did, do you feel like you 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 cultivated a, a act quickly? Because you said you started working a lot. Some people take years to you know get on stage and work and get you know an, an act. So for Robin Harris on him to invite you and stuff, or was it just you're naturally funny and whatever you said out your mouth was working? I didn't start cultivating an act until I started doing business in comedy. Okay. Before then, it was just telling what's going on, mm -hmm. telling my true venting. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm the eighth of eight children. Nobody really listens then, listen to me. Mm -hmm. And I, um, you know, had a lot of things going on. And I, you know, I'm a type of comic, I think that real ones that are like born with this thing in our brain that mm -hmm. we see things differently than other people sure and we see things we see that we can see it the humor mm -hmm. in things mm -hmm. and so i just was telling a lot of stories and stuff like i still do mm -hmm. but now i know what a segue is and right. now i know how to construct a beginning middle and the end and you know where the peaks and the pauses and right, all that is right, right. pretty before that it was just well it's funny i worked with you a couple of times in arizona in this big you know celebrity theater and I'm going to give it, I don't know if you've ever seen it before, but your ass don't give, you just on the floor, on the couch. You, I think you had a little couch Not with so you much on something. the floor anymore. Oh, well, oh, you don't do that no more? You Not so fun. much that. Oh, okay. That's but for recreation. I only. was like, this girl gets her all. I mean, for real. Yeah, you know? I have broke nails and fucked up outfits and everything doing the stand-up I used to do because I was very physical at one right. time. You know, I was like on Jay's ass right. all over the place. <laughs> But, um, you know, get older and you stop doing that shit. No, I know so. that's right. I know that's right. Uh, do you feel, how do you feel about women getting a certain respect towards men in comedy? Because it doesn't sound like it bothers you. I can say it doesn't bother you. You work a lot for a female comic, to be honest with you. You do work a lot. You know that. You're one of the top, I'm going to say five black females working. But there's a lot of other young females coming up trying to come. And I, do you feel that? Do you feel like females are just as funny as men at all stages or they need to cultivate before they can be up there with the big boys or with the boys? What do you think about that? Well, I do have opinions about that. That's what you're here for. We're in the panic room, girl. Talk it out. I believe that to be a really good female comic, you do have to have the acceptance and respect of the men. But... True. I mean it in this way. I think to be a really good female comic, you need to be guy funny. And what I mean by mm. that is guys will come see you without their bitch. Ooh. Most of the time, guys come with their chick mm -hmm, to mm -hmm, a comedy show. Mm -hmm. It's a date. Right. But when you can bring niggas three and four together, mm. that the dudes are coming to see you, That's interesting. that means that you're relatable to men and women. You're not just, see, what, what men don't like mm -hmm. is to hear bitches talking only to bitches and not including them. Mm. And I include mm. men in my, in my material, you know, and I don't just down them or anything like that. Plus, I'm pretty international because when I wasn't just raised in Oakland. They moved me out of Oakland to the suburbs to a white community called Castro Valley, California, where I went to mm -hmm. all white schools from the middle of elementary school, mm -hmm. junior high school, high school, junior college, and college. And I'm talking about in a city where there might have only been 12 black families back in the oh, wow. 70s and stuff. So I did get a great education, didn't have that much fun, but did get a great education. And with the English degree that I have, I know how to construct, I know, I have, you know, I know how to relate to all the people in the audience, not yeah, right, just right. the I women. Mm -hmm. Like sometimes you'll hear women on stage and they're like, girl, girl, uh, how are you just addressing women okay. when there's clearly men in the room? Good you know, point. so Good now point. you've excluded the men. Now they don't want to hear what the fuck you talking about. Good point. Good point. That makes sense. So makes sense. I do feel like you and, and I don't think you need to try to be it. I think you just need to be, be it. it. Nice. You know? The, you can't, this is a business where the harder you try, the worse, worse you're going to look. It need to be mm -hmm. natural. Mm -hmm. it, need to, it need to be you. The, you know, I'm not a scripted comic. A mm -hmm. lot of comics, you'll see them do the same act in Arizona yeah. as they do in Chicago, as they do in Bethesda, as they do in San Francisco, 
And that's a scripted comic, but you got to remember that shit. You got to remember your script. Right. Me, I can't do that. I can barely do that when I'm acting and doing movies and shit. So how, why would I mix maybe some alcohol and some excitement in with having to remember shit? But I can tell you what happened yesterday. You know, I got a whole Netflix special on my motherfucking Thanksgiving. That's all, I can, that's all I'm free to say. Ooh, finally, finally. That's all I'm free to say right now. That's all? Yeah. Um, I, I, I went through your IG, and it's just so much. We're going to talk. Let's go with a couple of things. Um, we don't know what I noticed about you. I was telling somebody recently, I, I just feel like you've been through a lot. You're a sweet person if they know you. I'm going to be honest with you, you know, if they know you. Outside can be a little scruff, whatever. But I believe it's a defense mechanism that you might have been through so much. You're like, treat me the right way or we're going to go left. You know, all, I've, I've been through enough of this shit. You know what I'm saying? I don't well, think you comedy take... make you hard, too, Okay. for a female. Because you have to fight for everything. Okay. You have to fight. You know, people will get on before you and not do their time and run your time out on stage. Yeah. You got to fight about that. Right, right. You get bad checks back in the day a lot. Oh, yeah, yeah. Somebody out here got one the other day. <laughs> and you got to fight about <laughs> yeah. that. Like, that's we're taking it to the street. Like, right. I got goons on speed dial. Don't fuck with my paper or right. my time or my craft or my... Just don't fuck with me. Right. And this business will make you lose a lot of your femininity. Okay. But the right motherfucking man can pull it right on back up. Ooh, 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 ooh. Okay, we'll get to the right man in a second. Um, all right, so you toured with... Uh, so much to talk about. You toured with Cat Williams a lot for years. Am I correct? That's very correct. Um, what did that change in your life? How did that change your life? Oh, I changed everything for me. Okay. Because first of all, I had never been on a tour at all. Ain't nobody asked me to go on their tour mm -hmm. for whatever reasons. Mm -hmm. Fear. And it brought money into my life because, you know, if you work with Cat Williams, you're going to get paid. Mm -hmm. And I got on, I think, maybe the biggest stage I had done oh, so right. far mm -hmm. because we did uh, when we did American Hustle, that movie, yep. the concert footage at the end was at the Ari Crown. I had never played... Chicago, right? Uh-huh. Mm -hmm. I had never played a, an arena like that. And then I got to fly on private jet. Ooh. And I had never done that. There's only two people to this day who've ever done that for me. You Cat. know, that was Cat and Dave Chappelle. Dave Chappelle. Mm, okay. And, um... You know, it gave me. We did so good in the in the tour that 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 we did a film. You right, know, right. And it was just one of the greatest experiences ever. But let me ask you, it, it, it's such a different experience from doing a comedy club, which is three hundred people, to doing fifteen thousand, eighteen thousand, whatever it may be. What did you have to change about your act? You felt like you know the different energy or bigger people. Like how does that work? I mean, I know how it is, but. You know, what is well, it? I think at that time, I didn't really know what to change, oh, but shit. I know what to do now. Right. Uh, I don't care if I'm in a club or an arena or in a dark closet. Because first of all, I don't wear my glasses, so I can't see the motherfuckers no way. So <laughs> it makes no difference right. to me who's right. out there, except for what, the, the, sure. what I can hear. Um, I know that when I do bigger rooms, I wear flashier clothes. You know, okay. I have on more makeup. I try to be very opulent so the people way back there can see, see me well. Nice. And I want the people in arenas to know that I'm bringing big energy for you. Mm -hmm. You know, I don't wear what I would wear in an arena in a, in a club. What I look like with sequins and fucking feather coat on at the improv. Right. Like, you're doing too much, bitch. Right. But, um, you know, if I'm at the Hollywood Bowl, mm -hmm. it's everything I got. Uh, if I'm at the, you know anywhere that's big mm -hmm. and um i don't have a i think my preference is uh clubs just because of the intimacy the intimacy sure. and the interaction all right. all right that's interesting um as a friend of cat williams how do you think he's is there any way he's misunderstood or he is what it is nobody should misunderstood 
nobody should misunderstand Cat by now for all the people who ask about him all the motherfucking mm -hmm. time. Like, clearly everybody's obsessed. Why is this, in, because he's an enigma and because you can't figure him out and because you can't get that close and all that stuff. Sure. Like, every motherfucking interview I do, somebody's asking me about Cat, which is great yeah. because I feel like I'm a good representation of the brother. You know, I, I think he's a fucking great guy. He's super, super... Talented? Intelligent, yeah, before yes. talented. Okay. Well-read, yes. intelligent, high IQ, and then talented, and then funny, and then poignant, and then important, and up-to-date, and mm -hmm. knowledgeable, and mm -hmm. teachable, like Mooney used to be. Yes, yes, one of my favorites of all time. You know, time. so... Um, I'm a fan of Cat Williams, too. I'm, don't, 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 well, it wouldn't I, make yeah. a difference if you were, if you weren't. Well, the I'm, facts are, the right. facts remain, because there's been people who weren't, who asked me questions, too, and I stand on what mm -hmm. I just said uh -huh. every time. That's, uh, the, that's the motherfucker I know. Okay, that's, that's, that's fine. About uh, what does it feel like to be in a Dave Chappelle spa space? You know, for him to take you on, you know, he's considered the GOAT right now, you know, and to bring him on, to even have, a, to bring you on, I mean, to, 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 to even give you the, the, the knowledge. How does, how does that make you feel? I mean, he said one time I was a great comedian on a clip for a hot second, and that shit went viral. I was like, well, yeah. I was like, damn, everybody, I know, up. I know. he called you great. I was like, what? But he brought you in. That's the difference. Okay? Yeah. He'll call me great on the outside, but called you in. So what, is, what does that feel like? Does it validate something to you? Do you feel like you know, I belong in the room now? Or I've always felt like I belong in the room? But, you know, how does that feel to be brought in with a, a cat, I mean, a, a Dave Chappelle? Well, that did blow my mind because the first time that he acknowledged me, I didn't even know that he knew who the fuck I was. Mm -hmm. Bill, my manager and best friend, we flew to New York to watch Eddie live at Saturday Night Live mm -hmm. when he went back after 25 years. Okay. So we were there. And then I was walking down the hall and I see Chappelle and he see me and he was like, the queen, the queen is here. I was like, where's the fucking queen? I thought Latifah was in the building. Right. And uh, he was talking to me. Right. I was like, oh my God, hi, you know, and then we took pictures. I got the pictures and everything like that. And then um, every now and then he would just like reach out and fuck with me, you know. Uh, and I mean, I think that if you are, to have Kat and Chappelle appreciate me mm -hmm. does validate me mm -hmm. but with motherfucking goats sure. that, sure, you know, uh, but I didn't need that validation because I already am secure in who the fuck I am. You know what I'm saying? I know what I do to these audiences. I know the work that I put in. I know who sees me. I know who act like they don't see me. Yeah, but when they do validate you, other people believe you've arrived. Trust well, me. Well, that's you know other people, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. But, but that's who's paying for you, too, to go well, see yeah, you, it support is. you, and call you. Because here it is. Let me tell you, I just told you, you, you know, you're definitely top five female. You know, let's be, I'm be on top five, three almost. But some of the other females, they ain't taking them, Chappelle and, and Cat Williams ain't taking them all and putting them on a well, level. Well, but you're talking about two beasts. So they, 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 they fuck with a beastly bitch. Okay, right, right. But they also fuck with other people who ain't beasts too. Right out of black females, yeah. <laughs> oh, let, me, let, me, let, me, let me look at my. Friend. Okay, <laughs> all right, all right. Well, well, that was good. Because sometimes they just want to give some people a chance. Right. You know what I'm saying? I think it's they dope do that like that too. Do that, yeah. I, I don't yeah. do that. Yeah. What? No, I don't. I don't. So once that. you're there, you're only there by yourself. You ain't giving no. a chance. You ain't reaching back. I down? fuck with other people in my in my. I don't like. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just saying. The fuck? They said, oh, you know? Linnell, my friend, he's so funny. Yeah. Can he do five minutes on your show? No. Ooh, Linnell. No. Now, do you want to know why? <laughs> because my audience didn't pay for amateur night. Oh, you just, my no. audience paid to see professional comedians. Come on. They man. have amateur night for that. Linnell. And then if I give you five minutes, who's right. five minutes will be shaving uh, off? Okay. Mine. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Not mine. I know that's right. So now you got to talk to the other people. Do they want to give up five minutes of their okay, time? Man. Okay. And they're as anxious to get on stage the fuck as whatever. You know, I had to earn my way there on these is. stages. On you earn yours. Yeah, come on and now. Nobody give me, oh, it's, it's my friend and all that shit. I had to get on stage and slay come on. time after time after time. And that's the only way you get fucked with. And that's the only way you get paid. Nobody pay wants to see you have a bad day. Right. I had a bad day. I've been on stage when I was having a miscarriage. I was on stage Man. when my mama died.
So I don't want to hear nothing about I had a right. bad day sure. and my set is fucked up, bitch. You, uh-uh. No, 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 no. I feel you know. It's funny. I also think it's kind of disrespectful when comics come to the see you in you know in different little cities and want to get on. Well, they didn't like, come to like, see you. Right, right. They came to get on ooh, on you. Ooh, oh, oh, don't do that no now. Don't yeah, do that. Yeah. Do you know when I got to <laughs> L.A. With the, the, after it, it stuck? I went out for almost a year to okay. comedy clubs and I never got on the mic. Really? All I did was watch. Okay. Why did this comic work in this room and this comic didn't work in this room? What kind of crowd is this? Mm. Are they male? Are they female? Are they drinking? Are they not drinking? Are they couples? Are they singles? Are they hunting? Are they black? Are they white? You know? Mm. And I studied all that shit. I, every time you go out, See, these motherfuckers will come and ask you for time, mm-hmm. and you'll give them time, and they won't even stay to watch you. Oh, don't do that. They go don't to another that. club and try to get out. So how are you going to learn something you're so thirsty? How are you going to learn anything if you don't watch people? That's right. Mm-hmm. How you want time on my stay, but you didn't even stay to watch me? Mm. No, that's no. somebody else. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I hate when even comedy club owners, to you comedy club owners, who try to slide a nigga in, try to slide a comic in. Like, that don't happen do? no more. Oh, I know, that's no. right. No. Right. And also, nine out of ten times when you do let somebody on stay, Let's say you say, you know what? Okay, I'm going to give you five. I'm going to take five minutes off of my time. I'm going to give you five minutes. Nine out of ten times they suck. Ooh. You might get one motherfucker that really right. did a good job or that you might take with you. That's what happened with Aaron Thompson. Do you know who Aaron mm-hmm. Thompson is? Mm-hmm. Aaron Thompson is a comic that I saw at the Savoy because mm-hmm. uh, Chris Spencer, Spencer yeah. was doing it. And he was a good-looking guy. He looked mixed, you know, kind of swirly, like black Latino. <laughs> I didn't say white. I said black hey, Latino. Hey, white? No, oh, yeah. your mom was white. But anyway, um, so oh, uh, the guy's on stage. Mm-hmm. He looked real good, and he said he was a cop, a cop doing comedy, and he was funny. And I, I'm sitting there, you know, being smug and shit. But this guy really was funny, and I couldn't believe he was a cop. So after the show, after his set, not the show, after his set, I got up and I walked up to him. And I said, are you really a cop? And he said, yeah. I said, are you on the street or are you at the desk? And he said, I'm on the street. I said, where? He said, in Watts. Oh, damn. I said, you're a cop? And Watts, and you doing comedy? Shit. And material. he said, yeah. Then I took his number, and we started communicating. And I told him, number one rule, never come by my house in the police car. The <laughs> motherfucker did it. That's when I knew he was a comic. I said, bitch, you going to give me a snitch tag in okay. these streets. Get the okay. fuck out of here. But he was the type of cop to play basketball with the kids. He over in Nickerson Garden. It's oh, not, shit. No Hood place Hood. to yeah, yeah, be yeah. somebody. And, and he out there playing basketball with the kids and eating ice cream and stuff. And I said, you the type of motherfucker that'll get killed out here because they always kill the good ones and they never kill the asshole. I said, I'm gonna get you off these streets if it's the last thing I do. Mm. So he started traveling with me, right? And traveling? opening, traveling with oh, me. Oh, traveling, okay. And opening for me. Mm-hmm. I, I, I put him on some dates. Mm-hmm. Then, I went back out on tour with Kat, and he brought Aaron as an opener. Now, Aaron wow. had to make a decision. Wow. Because your LAPD don't give a fuck about your comedy yeah, career, yeah, sure. and they're not going to let you off every weekend so you can go do comedy. Mm-hmm. So he had to make a decision. Do I quit the police force that I've been on for like 14 years mm-hmm. and pursue my dream. This is an opportunity that may never come again. Lunell and Cat Williams and me and arenas and stuff like this. Or do I say I can't do it for the betterment of my family? Yeah, I yeah. need to kick. No, that motherfucker said police department kick rocks. And what? he went on the tour with us 
and I got him out the streets like I said I was going to, and he remains out the streets. He's doing cruise ships and shit and all that shit right now. Okay, and now, he gave did up you, being a police he says, I find a handsome mix. So that was mix. somebody that I, you know, picked out of nowhere. Yeah, okay, all that fine and handsome mix. Did he, Did you do him like men do other female comics? You get a little of that cop cock? I tried, you okay, know, a little cop cock. Married. Oh, I, oh. If you see me around a good looking guy, and I always try to have good looking guys on my right, team, right, right. I have tried to fuck them. <laughs> uh, okay, okay. So, okay, I'll just hire you instead, and then you have to travel with me anyway. I remember the attic. Okay, so we'll uh, continue. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, he uh, okay. he's, he's doing really well. Well, good for him. And he's off the street. All right, all right. So you know there are opportunities that you know people have been given, but you got to be, you got to get somebody's attention. All right, all right. I get okay. And if you and if you are good enough, you can make a room full of drunk motherfuckers be quiet, mm -hmm. and you don't have to yell to do it. Mm -hmm. But you got to have that thing. I think the first thing that catapulted you in film and all that was the Borac movie. That thing there, man. I couldn't believe he was in there. First of all, it's so wild. I didn't think he put a black woman in there. That was such a wild dude. Was a lot of that improv? Was that it was all improv. It was pretty much improv. You killed it. I mean, there were scenarios that were set right. up. Right. But there was no script. And you know, I went back and tried to watch Borat about two months ago, and I got about 10 minutes in. I, could, I couldn't even take really? it my damn self. I'm like, this shit is uncomfortable. I like that. But it was a great movie. Financially, sure. still is. Oh, praise good. God. Good, good. I didn't get the traction out of it that I should have, and I'm gonna tell you why. Okay. Because the only people that were doing press for the movie was Sasha Baron Cohen and Ken Davidian. I had signed a gag order. Oh, I couldn't well, tell nobody I wasn't a hoe. You know, right, right, and right, like, right. let's say you're sitting at the Beverly Hills Hotel in the Polo Lounge, you have a martini, and now people are like. Right, right, right. Well, I can't say, no, I'm not a really an actor, but you don't know who you're talking to in Hollywood, and now I done breached my contract, and now they're going to sue me. So you had to be a prostitute? You were sucking dicks what, 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 during, during the press run? I was a prostitute in the movie. I know that, but then people say, yo, come on, I got No, I'm people torn. thought, right. because everybody else in the movie was real. Right. So they thought I was a real hooker. That's what I'm saying. You make a little extra money. Come on, now. You a hustler from Oakland. From the Bay Yay. I'm a very bad hooker. Oh, really? Why? What's I'm not good. You're not good? Well, you, what's a bad hooker? Oh, wow. I'm lazy. That's not good. I want you to just, I'll do something easy, like you I, want me to pee on your face? I wow, can do that. Wow, wow. But there's a market. <laughs> there's a market. Oh, but all yeah. this fucking and shit all yeah. day. You can't bend over. You can't drop it like it's hot no more. Now what? Uh, you can't you get an eagle. You can't do the eagle thing and throw your leg up no nigga, more. Nigga, I got the pussy. Why well, I got to do all the tricks? <laughs> I'm the one with the pussy. <laughs> really? I brought the pussy to the party. Man, don't uh, no. Fuck, I got young do. girls. Don't what else hurt. I gotta do? Don't listen to new nail, young girls. Fuck Shit. what she talking about. Okay, you hurt okay. Me. okay. Hell no. All right. Well, then the next one movie. Uh, not next, right away, but the next. But you have such a career. How was it working with Eddie Murphy? I, I don't ask you like that because that's a corny question. How was? I know how it was, but was he all you thought he was gonna be? I have to drink some of your tea. I hope you don't have <laughs> okay. COVID. Well, no, I know. Yeah, I hope you ain't got Did nothing. Did you backwash? I hope it? you ain't got nothing. No, I hope you ain't got nothing. Else. I told you I'm a bad hooker, so you don't have to worry. Oh, okay, about you me. ain't sucking dick. All right, just. I, mean, just I didn't say that. <laughs> oh, well, how, how, when the last time you sucked a dick? With the shit, because I mean that could be some resist. Come on, don't do me like that. Well, I ain't thirsty no more. Fuck it, then. It's yours and shit. I sucked the dick the last time I was in New York. How was the last time you was in New York? <laughs> a couple weeks ago? Is it? Like, we do. We dig it. All right, you get what I'm saying. Back to Eddie, okay? Let's Some go. good dick in New York. Uh, yeah, okay. All right, all right. Well, damn, good dick in my <laughs> don't, cup. Don't oh, start talking about it if you don't want me to talk about it. Oh, shit. Uh, okay, you were asking right, anyway. About, yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's go, about, about Eddie. Yeah. Was he all you thought he was going to be? And I'm not trying to make you say, yeah, yeah. But like, oh, he was like so down to earth. Like, I thought he was going to be this, but he was this. So, you know you know what I'm saying? What was he to you when you saw him? Like, was he all? He was more than I expected. Really? Mm hmm Being able to watch him work was a mind fuck, you know? Really? Yeah, he's doing the lines over and over. I keep hitting this, I'm so sorry. No, no, you're good. Okay, no, no. Uh, you know, to watch Eddie work, like okay. not just, I had already met Eddie first of all because we had been in clubs together and stuff like this. And I was big big friends with, with his brother Charlie, rest in peace. Oh yeah. So me and Charlie was cool. We had done projects together. Mm -hmm. So Eddie clearly knew who I was. And I remember going to the Norbit, Norbit mm -hmm. premiere mm -hmm. and I, he was with that um, Tracy Edmonds girl. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Baby face. And I went to, uh, mm -hmm. I, 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 yeah, I'd seen him from across the room, and I went like, God, come over there. 
And he was like, yeah, come on. This wow. is the first time we really had a conversation besides being in the conga room. And so I said, my name is Lunell. I'm a, he said, I know who you are, Lunell. I know. That then I wanted to pee on myself. Wow. Because this is really, you know, Eddie's hot shit. Sure. And so um, I said, well, I just want to thank you for making the character Rasputia. Because now I have finally seen somebody who looks like me in a bathing suit. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> okay. And he fell out. That's not true, by the way. Right. And he fell out. Um, and so I went on about my business. Now, when the Dolomite audition came up, you know, they didn't tell me it was Eddie for a while, right? Wow. Or that Wesley Snipes was going to be in it or, you know, all right, these right. other people. All right, right. Divine Joy Randolph, she played Queen Bee, she killed that. Mm -hmm. I, uh, I had to audition five times, and I didn't get the role. I, I did, We even did an old school screen test. I didn't get the role I auditioned for, because right. I auditioned for right. the role of Queen Bee, the right. one that Divine right. got. Right, right, right. But they gave that. me the ante. Two reasons I'm, I'm cool with that. Okay. Is number one, because the scene that I did with Eddie was just me and him. Right. Was nobody else, right. and he improved with me, and right. that's what actually came out on film. in the house in the cereal, yeah. the morning breakfast, right. or whatever. Okay, right. And then I always wanted to do a retro movie, and that kitchen reminded me of my mom's old kitchen with the plug-in skillet. That was the new big Christmas item, mm -hmm. and the egg timer, and the, the you know some of the patterns and stuff. So that was really cool, and then um, because I there was a lot of walking that Divine Joy Randolph had to do in them streets. Oh, oh okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. With right, right. them platforms on right, and right. shit like that. And after I watched him, I was like, shit, I'm glad I'm doing that. <laughs> you know, it would have been great <laughs> to do it, but uh, I'm lazy. Right, right, right. But let me ask you, to be in awe of someone like that, how did you keep your composure? You know, Only to work. because yeah. I had already met him. Oh, okay. Remember? Right, right I had right, already right. met him. Right. Only, and I, I had already had a picture of me and him in the living room. Only because I'd already right, met right, him, or else right. I probably would have lost my shit. Star started looking at him, yeah, him and shit. Yeah. For sure. You know, yeah. his nails look like what's all this. But um, uh, he was super cool, and we have some laughs that only him, me, and Arsenio know about. Nice. No, me, him, Arsenio, and my manager, Bill, and my agent, they know exactly what this shit that mm -hmm. we always, that's, you know, I can't even go into. Right. And then, um, then to be cast again. And coming to America, right? I was, back yeah, to back, right, right. I was like, "This isn't happening." I feel some type of way about not being in Beverly Hills Cop Four, like right now. But, but did, did you audition for um, um, the second uh, coming to America? Or he just said, "I want her." God, that's beautiful. That's beautiful. I'm not a good auditioner. I'm gonna tell you right now. Any I right fucking there? auditioning. Yeah. Now give me the role. I'll rip the role. That's what I say. Man, we all because say. here's the thing. <laughs> I, uh, I I did this thing. We got this thing now. It's just like you know, make me an offer. Offer only. I'll only that. if imagine. they want me, they yeah, can get me. Right. But don't make me an audition because yeah. I really hate. I really hate it. And I even worked with a coach before and talked to people about it. I I, I I I I don't audition well. <laughs> you know what I don't like? I don't like when I when I made a couple of movies. I produced them. I brought actors in to play opposite you. They're gonna give you the energy. I hate when cast directors be like, "We can be shouting at each other." And you're like, "I can be like, bitch, I'll kill you!" Like, you I'll know kill who you I too. work Fuck really, you. really, really, really well with? Who? Really well, and she makes me be my best. Is Angela Gibb, Marley Gibb's daughter. She was Miss Tootie on Black Jesus. And she... She's a cast director? No, she's an actress. Okay, Marla's yeah, daughter, yeah. Angela okay. Gibb. Okay. And she's... Uh, you didn't watch Black Jesus? I saw... Yeah, I saw you See, and... See, Miss Tootie, I saw her. Slim, the, and then the we slim. did Think Like a Man 1 and slim. 2 together. Mm -hmm. And, yeah, because Angela and Charlie Murphy had an affair on, right. on Black, on Black Jesus. Jesus. I mean, not Black, Black Jesus. <laughs> Black right. Jesus. Black Jesus, right. Everybody's not she's movie. really... And so now we work together on this show called Hacks. Right, Hacks, right, with, right, uh, right, right, Smart. right. And, yeah, she's great. I love working with Angela. She helps me. Well, one thing I like about you, you can work with black actors, white actors. You can fit in every fucking way. You know what I'm saying? As, and as, I must say, as raunchy as you are, and sometimes on stage. Explicit. Explicit. We'll use that word. But for them to still want you, you know, you know, instead of shining away, like, oh, she's because a little too much. Because it's the way you do it's not, it's not what you say. It's how you say it. Mm -hmm. And as explicit as I am, I'm always talking about situations that are non-racial. Mm -hmm. Sex is non-racial. 
weight is non-racial. These fucking kids is non-racial. That covers everybody. Okay. I wouldn't be in Las Vegas if I just wanted to talk about niggas all the time. Right. That's you right. got to be able to talk to everybody in Las Vegas, and I'm there every week. I'm the only right. black woman out there every With week. With a residence. Yeah. Residency. And so, you know, but then I do different things in different rooms. If I'm in Mississippi, I might talk about niggas all goddamn day. Right. You know, but, right. and I think that it's only because I was raised around white folks that I know how to In Oakland? Fall, no, in Castro, in Castro Valley. Uh, Castro Valley, my bad. That I know how to, you know, fluctuate in between the shit, and I'm literate. Ooh. Ooh. You enunciate all your syllables. Most of the time, unless I'm drinking tequila, then it's all a big <laughs> blur. Eh, I love it. Have you, <laughs> I, 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 I'm, I'm going to ask you a stupid question because I know it's, it's yes. But have you ever been offered plays? I, plays? I started in theater before I ever did comedy. That's what I heard. And I did one of the longest running cabaret shows in the world. It's in the Guinness Book of World Records. It's called Beast Blanket Babylon. It was in San Francisco. And it was just amazing. You can Google it or whatever. And um, you had to be able to sing, dance, act to be in that. And I'm hoping to go back to theater again one day before it's over. You know, I want to be on Broadway, too. They let a bunch of hoes on Broadway. Ooh. They did. There's not really actors. There was some... Some, some whole thing. There was some people who got on Broadway who were just on there because there was a phenomenon. <coughs> Nene leaks and shit like that. I don't do that. So, <coughs> so you know, funny. that kind of hurt Broadway to me because right, that's right. sort of like a sacred place. Sure. Where real people be, not just reality stars and I worked in, like I worked in a movie in Europe. Shows. And they looked down on film acting. They were Broadway, you know. They, That's they just, the way it used to be. Like, Ooh, like, they oh. used to think television actors were big whores and all this stuff. I mean, that's still true, but I'm just saying. Right, right. Well, I ain't hold my way and shit. All right, so um, you were on the Van, Yana Van Zant show, and you were saying how, you know, you were an angry black woman. I didn't say that. They said that about oh, me. Oh, okay. Well, I was going to say, how do you feel about that? Do you feel like there's some demons inside of you that you haven't released or you released oh, on stage? Oh, absolutely. Yes. Yeah, for sure. Just being a comic or just being who you are? No, just being who I am. Right. Yeah. Right, right. How, and, and you solve those or the, the, the stage is your safe place to, to, to spew it? The stage is where I do my therapy. Mm -hmm. The stage is where I vent. Right. The stage is where I'm heard. It's not a... Conversation is the total, you know, democracy. Right. It's what I say right. for an hour, right? And it's where it's what keeps me sane and gives me love mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. attention mm -hmm. and all that stuff. Do you think you've overcome some of them, most of those demons that you had or no. situations? No. Really? Damn. Really? You still fight it? Only daily? the dope. Okay. Only right. the dope. Right, right. But, you know, the stuff that's happened in my childhood and the murders and the this and that right. in my family. Right, grandfather. No, I ain't overcome right. it. Ain't gonna overcome it. But the dope I did, so that was a good thing. Okay, well, that, well we're glad you, 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 you're here for that. I mean, hey, you know, pass it on here because that dope is something else. But that, 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 that family trauma, I think a lot of black, I think black people need to go to, I think the United States government owes black people one session per month for therapy. For with, a, 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 with a black therapist, though. Can be a white one? No. Okay, I know that's right. You can have Same. a white therapist if you want to. <laughs> no, right, Certainly right. there's qualified, <laughs> let me clean that up. Certainly there's right, qualified yeah. white therapists out right. there. I just don't choose to talk to one because there's shit that I would talk about that you have no idea about as a non-black person. Right, I understand that. So have you ever gone to therapy? Yeah. Okay. Do you feel like it'll be same sex or can you go to a man or a woman? How do you pick, prefer that? I prefer a man. Really? But it makes more sense for it to be a woman. Right. For right, me. Right. When you did, uh, it did help? No. God damn. It didn't help. No, because he was just, he was just studying to be a, a psychologist. He wasn't really one yet. Oh, okay. And then he moved and he abandoned me and I was in there for abandonment issues. My <laughs> Hell fucking no. My therapist abandoned me. I'm like, what the it's fuck? Is <laughs> wow. Um, so you see how... That's my real life, uh -huh. and that's material, yeah, sure. and how I don't have to make that up. I couldn't make that up. Yeah, but you, venting is one thing, but you need to hear some solutions. You're on stage rambling and I'm stuff. I'm doing fine with no solutions, really? don't you think? But some people, well, you're on my show, so sure. Yeah, you're fam <laughs> fabulous. You're doing the great. You're fine. You're right, right. No, why? I hear you. But I just think a lot of black people, we, we, we just go through trauma. Just Yeah, there's living. a lot of trauma. Yeah. Everybody got family shit. For black folks, especially police. That being and then we have to live in a country where it's plain and clear 
that the presenters and the higher up don't want us here. It's just like the buffalo on Catalina Island. Do you know about the buffalo mm. on Catalina Island? Catalina Island has buffalo on it. Why? Know. Because they brought buffalo over there to use them for a movie. And then they never took them off. And really? then they just, and there's buffalo in Catalina Island. So we're the fucking buffalo. They brought us over here, now they don't want us here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Guess what, motherfuckers? We don't want to be here either, but we're trapped, and this is all we know, and to pack up and move to Ghana and ain't shit happening. like that, that and move your whole family. No, no, no people do it every day, but I mean, it's a lot, because I've thought about getting the fuck up out of here. Man. But I don't want to leave all my family. Of course. Well, we're doctrinated here. We ain't going nowhere. The best thing is to make it work here, because Africa don't want your ass either. Trust me, I've been in many, enough cabs to know that. That's because you light skin. I, I've been to Africa. See, yeah. see me neither. <laughs> <laughs> but I got a vagina, so I'm accepted wow. everywhere. It's like an American Express card between oh. my legs. Hmm. Okay, okay. I do a thing. I, I ask fans to ask you questions. Oh, shit. Well, oh, shit. Now, you girl, do, uh, on your page, you got plenty of fans. Okay, let's be I real. mean, but is this real? You already asked fans to write questions for me. Yeah, yeah. You're making this up. No, no I, got, I got some questions. I Could you find me lying, Pierre? You know, I lie sometimes. But I lie for you if I lie to you. Okay, okay, that's a yeah. lie too. But yeah. go ahead. What a bad idea. <laughs> My friends are something else. Well, people I know. All right. All right. How about this? So this is good. It's an easy one. What gives you your sexual freedom? Because I've seen you lately online. And on OnlyFans. Have you subscribed to my OnlyFans yet? Please subscribe well, to my well. OnlyFans, everybody. It's full of juicy content. And no, I'm not busting it open. Yeah, that's why I won't sign. I'm not, I'm, I'm, yeah, I know. You'd be I, surprised I who yeah. wants to see a 63-year-old pussy. 25-year-old boys do. I heard that. A lot word. of them. A lot word. Of them. You better check your sons, ladies. I'm not going after them. They coming after me. So your sexual freedom been like that all, all your life? You've been like that all your no, life? No, actually, you get sexually free and promiscuous if you get sexually traumatized early. Oh, really? If you get raped, mm -hmm. which I did. Or mm. if you get, you know, weird you know, other situations. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So when that happens and you sort of lose a lot of your innocence and wow. it's easier to go right. bananas after that. Well, wow. I, I didn't know the rape part of your life, but I, I think a lot of, a lot of women have been... People don't know a lot about me, but I tell them. And right. if you ask me, I'll tell you. But, but I'm not protecting no motherfucking body. I ain't done nothing to nobody. Right. And I'm not holding shit in. And if you didn't want to be talked about in the future, you shouldn't have done nothing to nobody. I know, that's right. Is, is that situation, that person gone? Or like, jail, gone, don't no. bother, you know? He's still around. Oh, well, uh, what uh, I'm dead. You got raped twice or together? Two guys raped Oh, you? no, the rapist. Oh. The first time I had sex, I got raped by three white boys in high school in Castro Valley. Really? Uh-huh. And I don't know where they are now. I well. only remember one of their names, and he lived across the street. But the, but he got a name that a hundred people got. Right, so. right, right. Stephen. But did um did, did something happen to them? Like they go to jail? Or you just let it back? No, just... um, they should have. But my stepfather um, sat up drinking all night, made me stay up, and until I recanted the whole story, went back to the police station, told him it was all a lie. It was all my fault. Really? Because he said he didn't want to ruin them boys' life. Fuck my life. Your stepfather. Was he your stepfather black or white? Yeah. Damn. That's some cooning but shit. But he's an alcoholic and he wasn't my blood and he was right. a piece of shit. And, right, right. You know. Wow. You know the story. Wow, wow. And then you got raped again? No. Oh, okay, cool. Okay. Well, yeah. I mean, you know, that night train. It was that motherfucking night train. Y'all know about night Do you yeah, know about yeah, night train? Yeah, the old drink. Night the train would get you raped. <laughs> Night train will get you raped. You was fucked up. Drink Night Train. It'll get you raped. Oh, wow. That's the new slogan. I'm they don't have Night Train no more, so <laughs> I can talk about it. Right. Or else the brand people would be all on oh, my yeah. dick tomorrow about wow. slanderous ass bitch. Wow, wow. So you were a little inebriated and something went in the yeah, window. Yeah, you know, the party train thing. So did you say, I'm, I'm, I'm asking them for a reason. Did you say no and they still had sex with you? Because what about you telling me? I don't know. I was drunk, probably. Why you know you got raped then? Well, how do we know? Okay, you might not have been raped. You might have no, wanted, I wanted to do it. You know, I'm, I didn't want to fuck this guy. Mm. I wanted to fuck his friend. <laughs> Let him rape me. That was Hennessy. You should have done some Hennessy for now, him. That was that night train. Ooh. Oh, wow. And Cisco Wine Cooler. Now, that's what you're going to get some comments about. 
Because everybody from my, from Oakland, they, we were so off that Cisco wine cooler in Oakland, they took it out of Oakland. Three bitches could drink one bottle and everybody go out sloppy drunk that night. That's how bad that night that motherfucking Cisco wine cooler used to be. I, my first drink I ever had was um, Richard Wild Irish Rose. Oh yeah, that was in the yeah yeah. 80s. That was in the loop. Yeah, Wild yeah, yeah. Irish Rose. Rose. Yeah yeah. Richard Wild Irish Rose. <laughs> All right, here's another question. And I'm beyond this. Is, isn't your thoughts on I guess the beef between Bernie Mac and Steve Harvey? Cedric Entertainment said they had a beef on the road. Do you do you have any? I'm anything? unconcerned and unbothered by anything. <laughs> right right. What does that have to do? I do don't get? even give oh. a fuck. Both the, you know what I hate? Folks won't fight, but behind closed doors, they try to snake you and she can't. Uh, can't well, That's bullshit. I don't do that. No, you don't. You'll know do exactly it to you. where I stand right in your face. Right. I respect that, but people will do that to you. Well, it's been done to me. Right. God But man, that's God life, you know? People fuck people all the time. Apparently, I mean, I've been Sean Quella. Okay? Right, right. Well, yeah, what, about, yeah. what about your motherfucking friend? You better watch your motherfucking friend. And you need to, everybody out there need to narrow it down to about three. Ooh. Really? Ooh. Yeah. Because there's yeah. some motherfuckers in your face that got it out for you. They right in your face. Jesus had traitors at the table. Ooh. -wee. So, um, who would you put on your female Mount Rushmore? Four females. Excluding yourself. I know you belong. Of course, you're the one who made the motherfucker. You built it, okay. Black. Black. Yeah, I'm, I'm gonna put it down. Yeah, the, I'm gonna make you deep. deep damn, deep. I can't include Joan Rivers and no, no, Rosenberg. not this time, not this okay. time. Black. Okay, so Lawanda Page. Okay, well, bam, we don't. Lawanda Sanford and Son. Yes. Mm. Girl, and you gotta think that up. Adele Givens. Adele Givens. Shout out to a girl, Adele Givens, out of Chicago. Okay, that's good. That's good. Nice, nice so far. Nice. Mm. Zaynab Johnson. Yeah, she's good. She's good. I like her too. Zaynab. Mount Rushmore? Okay, all right. She's a young girl in the game, but okay. That bitch is a beast. Okay, yeah. And Ooh. I can't do me. You already there, but I don't Okay, know. um I mean there's a Jeannie Yashere. Jeannie Yashere. Those are some those are some interesting ones, because some of them are very young in the game. Whereas Not other, really. Who? Gina Yashere, what? Gina Yashere, are you, okay, Gina Yashere, okay. okay, first of all, 15 years counts too. I, I know this but, to 15 but years. But she was the highest paid black female comic in London. They have a ceiling cap where you can't make no more money. Ooh, wow. That's why she came here. Okay. And she'd been writing and doing Bob Hart's Abishola yep. for like mm -hmm. the last fucking four or five years. She's executive producer. And before that, she was, doing shit um, with uh, like uh, Leno or some shit like that and stuff like that. And she's done specials in Canada. She's a motherfucking beast. She's funny as fuck. And I made my made my choices. Okay, okay. Zainab is fucking- Oh yeah, yeah, she, I like her. Good amazing. material. Amazing. Good material. Um, I even liked Yvonne Orji's special. Did you watch it? The chick from- um, Yvonne Insecure. Orji? Yeah, Yvonne OG. Oh, yeah, yeah, I heard about her. Yeah, no, 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 no. Yeah, I didn't hear that many favorable reviews. They, I'm they, being honest they, with they you. Was, I know, I've heard that too, but yeah. I don't care. Right. You asked me what the fuck I thought. Oh, yes, ma'am. So, yeah. um, but, um, okay, I'm out rushing. Yeah, and then Lawanda, okay. I have to, because Lawanda Page had the ability to take Bible verses and make them nasty. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> and, you know, it was an inspiration for me being explicit. And, yeah. Okay, that's and, good. And Adele. So, so let me ask you, since it's a new year, you know, we're looking into 2023, what is a, how, how's the residency going? What is, how do people, how'd you even get a residency? You know, just curious. I started doing Sundays back at the SLS. I remember that. I got, okay. Mm -hmm. It was Eddie Griffin was Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Monique was Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and I was Sunday. I remember that. And then that had an ending that ended. Okay. And then I think it was really through the persistence of my black female agent and multicultural agency. Tamara Goins is my agent oh, and, Tamara. At, mm -hmm. over there at Innovative, my agency. And um, I don't, you know, my numbers was good because people lie, but numbers don't lie. Mm -hmm. And my numbers was good at the SLS. They was able to take that info. And I guess they heard Kimmel was opening a new, new club. I don't know what was said in the room. I wish I did. 
but you know, I did it mm -hmm. until March 8th of 2020, and that was the last time that I performed in the club before they shut everything down, down in Las Vegas. So, so it's been mm -hmm. two years and nine months, and I went back in September. Went back in September, I think, of 2022. And I'm um, there every Sunday night at, at 9.30. Nice, nice. So you fly, but you got to fly back and forth every... Well, I'm Sunday? not always coming from L.A. I might be on the road right. already. Right, right, true. So then I fly into Vegas, and then the next morning, I just fly home in an hour. Now, what if I had to fly from Chicago? Oh, well, yeah. I did that already. So on Monday, I just go home, too. Right, right. And how long is your show? How long is your show? As long as I want it to be. Woo! Mm -hmm. you, did, you do an Eddie Griffin sometime, like three hours and shit? No, never that. Oh, never that? They ain't gonna get that much out of you? No. Okay. okay. But okay. I might do an hour and a half. All right. And it's one show? Yes. One show. Nice, nice, nice. That's kind of dope to have a spot like that. There was a, you know, there's talk uh, about it uh, being more than one day. Right, right. Having a residency for like three or four days. Wow. Possibly. Would you ever, could you see you could you could see yourself doing like like a Joan Rivers you know as you get older you don't want to travel as much and people are coming well, to you well if it don't make dollars it don't make sense so if it you know if I was paid like them sure but not just for so being paid like a a club bitch doing four nights no. right right <laughs> because I have to be out of L A right sure, sure and I'm not trying to move to Las Vegas you, you know when when I went on your page man I was I was I was mind blown by how many people you know you like like they call you the auntie you know they mm -hmm. call you auntie right now. Everyone just gravitates to you. I've seen so many pictures of you and people smiling and shucking and yeah, smiling, just loving each other. And Never shit. shucking. Well, you know what it but is. But jiving. <laughs> okay, jiving. We'll use, yeah. we'll use jiving, okay? Um, you just have that infectious personality that people just gravitate to. You know, and, and it's, it's an auntie. It's an auntie personality. It's an auntie like vibe. Yeah. I accept it. You yeah. know what I mean? I got an auntie house. It smells like, you know, food. I see you. Or... Knock chomper incense and candles and shit. It's always smells like something, but it right. smells like something good. And, you know, I got big ass, obnoxious, cushy living I've room. Seen it. I've seen it. I've seen it. Good place to watch movies. I got the blanket on the couch. <laughs> and, and right now you're dolled up, but at home you give two fucks. Yeah, because <laughs> I'm you. at home. Wow. And but I'm still also people not trying you. to. Yeah, but I'm not trying to wear makeup every motherfucking day. Who am I, Kim Kardashian? It's like, if I was fucking a nigga, he'd wake up, I'd look just like what you see on my Instagram Damn. live. So, well, who are you? What is this? Why would I perpetrate? <laughs> this is what I wear to work. Right. It's like my uniform. Right. When I'm not at work, I'm not walking around, last the fuck up and glam the fuck up. I got to get my eyes rest. I got to get my skin a rest. Do you think people are ready for that look of you, of just plainness? Damn. They, they're fucking ready. They're ready? Of course, they <laughs> see it all the time. Shit, you, you know, know women afraid to do that? Yeah, but that's them. They, I'm not afraid. If I was you, fearless, I wouldn't even do the type of comedy I do. I mean, if I was fearful. Right. I'm not afraid. What are they going to say? Ooh, you ugly? That's what the block button's for. <laughs> <laughs> you you know, gotta love I'm it. at home, motherfucker. What am I supposed to do? Well, now, when I did my YouTube show weekly during the pandemic, right. You got on Wednesdays, up. I got dolled up for right, the people. Right, right. I even put on perfume, even though they couldn't smell it. It made me feel good. Right, right. Plus, I was damn near forgetting how to put on fucking makeup. The so right. I did that for the people. That was my job. That's why I took very If I'm sitting at the kitchen table. I might have a titty falling out or whatever. All right, I'm going to wrap it up with this. But let me ask you, what do you think is your secret to being relevant after four decades in this business? Some people, have, Many of us, not us, but falling off. I'm still here, <laughs> but you know what I'm saying. What, what what is it? What do you think? What do you think? You're it is? back. You fell off too. Hell what no! You We're cutting that out. Fuck that. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. Let's start from again. And so, okay, yeah. okay. No, but <laughs> listen, listen. I'm, I'm gonna tell you the truth. You guys uh -huh. at a certain point were hot as fuck. Call you, you, mm -hmm. all these guys. You guys was making movies. Mm -hmm. I was in Oakland. I wasn't here. Mm -hmm. I didn't have the opportunity to be in no Fridays and none of that kind of stuff. But at that time, we didn't have publicists and agencies and all that stuff to make you uh, excel after that. And so a lot of people did fall the fuck off. But the smarter people reinvented themselves, got yeah. into other stuff right. and stuff like that. That's what I mean. No insult, it's just a fact. You know what I'm saying? Ain't no okay, hold on. Falling off means you were Not trying to go somewhere. Not off the planet. No, no, it means you were trying to do something linear. 
I turned around and said, fuck, I'm, I had enough of this shit. And I left Hollywood. So I ain't fall off. I said, fuck these craziness over there. People were, my agents were lying to me, managers were lying. I was like, what is going on here? I felt like I was going to You ought to leave that in, actually. Really. And I left. I said, let me and, I'm get, get you know, away from I let these motherfuckers know that there are people, not just Dave Chappelle, that can walk away and say, fuck yeah. this. And, fuck and, this. And the love of the people in the streets kept saying, man, you funny. Where you at? Where you been at? Maybe say, you know what? Let me get back into it again. I, I just want to get away from it. An annoyingly funny comic. Annoyingly uh, funny. Yeah, because you're always annoyed about some shit. Mm-hmm. So you know what I mean? He's always annoyed. Got a lot of cutting to do on this goddamn show. And so <laughs> a lot of editing in this month. And so, no, no, listen, you really <laughs> ought not because <laughs> ought you not. know you really ought, ought not. not. That's what I'm arguing so. <laughs> but you know you've always been motherfucking right. funny. If we we you know our personalities and our personas sometimes don't always uh, mesh. You right, know what I'm right, saying? Right, I feel you. And so uh, there's never been any doubt about that. You wouldn't work if you weren't. You know. Right, right sure. But I think that just like me, I got the original bad girl. Of comedy title back in Oakland because I was a bad girl. Mm-hmm. I might have been the funniest bitch in the room, but I wasn't always the bitch everybody wanted to be bothered with, you know, mm-hmm. like, you know, and I used to drink and fight and cuss and all this kind of stuff, still do some of that. Mm-hmm. But, um, you know, everybody did. It's like Laura Hayes said to me one time. Mm, shout out Laura Hayes. She said, Lunell, you need to be nice and you need to be liked. And I used to say, these motherfuckers ain't got to like me. I'm still the baddest bitch in the room. Okay. And she was like, no, but they don't, you know. Right. And I came to find out that nobody really wants to work with you if you are, in fact, a dick. Right. You can be the funniest person in the room, but they'll take the not as funny person because they're going to have more fun and greater time with them true than your bitch ass. That's true. So I found that out. And um, I've changed my evil ways. Thank you, thank you. <laughs> oh yeah, I want to bring up this. I forgot about this. Um, you, uh, um, are you like the spokesman for Rihanna's uh, Fenty now, the Savage or the Big Plus Woman? What's going on with that? For like two years, I was Savage X Fenty lingerie ambassador what? for Rihanna. I wrote a check. My ass literally had to cash because I was talking to her and I told her I wanted to do it, and she's like, "Let's make it happen." I was like, "Ah ha ha, yeah, let's yeah. make it happen." I thought yeah. it was funny. Then she hit me in the DM and asked me for my email, and I sent her my email and contracts, and she started <laughs> like, "What the fuck do I do now?" Because you don't turn down one of the biggest come on now entertainers in the, the world. world. Come on, I didn't do this for Rainbow right. or fucking. Oh wow, don't disagree. Come on, <laughs> like, all my fans shop at Rainbow. The female Rainbow has been good to me too. Yeah. I, you can't and wear Charlotte this shit. Rose. You can't wear this shit but once. <laughs> God damn it. You can wear it to the party, well, well, and then yeah. you're going to throw it away. Yeah. Um, but wow. You did yeah, so doing that is how I ended up with a bunch of lingerie pictures in the first place. Okay. And then Ricky Smiley, ignorant ass, I love him. posted I those lingerie pictures I of me, and he it. didn't even post the ones I like. And I said, what are you doing? Mm. If you want to, what are you, obsessed with me? What? I'm like, well, if you want a picture, you should have asked how to send you some hot pictures. He said, send me some. And he was just cracking up. Mm. And I sent him some hot pictures, and he posted again. I saw it. I saw it. And then way back, remember, Bill Bellamy was like, yo, what is Lunell doing in her panties and stuff like this? And he said, she all right now. And said, she all right. But, you know, what are you doing? What are you doing? And then I said, you know what? Since I got so much heat, let me just drop this OnlyFans on that ass. Because we was already That's ready. That's a hustler. Now you are hustling, We was already baby. ready, and, and I, I didn't know when I was going to do it. I'm like, what better time to do it? And so we did. Thank you, everybody. Nice, nice. Well, damn. All right, so we do, I do the IG creeping. So, you know, I look at your IG page, see what you've been doing, what you've been up to, and my crew does. And uh, like I said, I was a vast, fucking, I'm so tired of looking at your page. Oh. God damn, for real. You post, you post, what, five a day or some pictures? Never. I have shit from the holidays I ain't posted yet, so. All right, well, let me ask you this. I know you and your daughter, you know, had a little outs, but now look at how beautiful y'all look. Yeah. So y'all finally came together. Ivana, yeah. that, that sense helped I you. I mean, she still get on my nerves. I still get on hers. That's oh, exactly. Life. But yeah, we're doing much, much better. That's, That's beautiful. That's what, that, really, that really is, man. And y'all look, y'all look like twins. She looks look like you. She, what, what's, your, what's her father name again? Dana Garrett. Yeah, yeah, she looks like Dana Garrett. She it's does. A, You'd have to see him. Well, I ain't seen him in years. I seen him in early 90s. I'll show you a picture of him. Who is Alex Reed? Is that somebody? You never heard of him before? Somebody said that was, might be your baby daddy. Like, oh. No, I got one baby daddy. The, right. the dimple, the dimple, the one dimple tells the, right, the there DNA. There it is. There it is. Yeah. All right. What, what, what was happening? Uh, oh, that, that's your girl. You just gave a shout out to oh, her. Yeah. You, you kissed that. Where was that at? Um, wall, at a man. comedy club somewhere. Oh, really? mm-hmm. 
And why? And, and, and what's the affinity? You said her first. What is it about, about LaWanda Page you love so much? Well, I think she had a really great career. Oh yeah. You know, and I think she started off a little risque, doing a little little. A little how risque, you doing? Right, Did right. you see her? Right. Bathing suit pictures and all that. When she was younger, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah I do remember she was sexy. Mm -hmm. Yes. And yes. she's a stand-up, right. and she's a, a partner with a, a boss, Red Fox. Right. And I just see some parallels there, you know. Red Fox fought for her to get that part. Absolutely. Because right? she didn't do well at first, and they were like, eh. And he was like, shit. He went uh, out absolutely. Yeah. And, you know, that's the way Cat, you know, Cat yeah. fell fighting for me, right. I, I like to believe. And so then, um, you know, she uh, developed this other style. Uh, besides playing the iconic Aunt Esther, right. she had this other comedic style to where she, like I said, she would take maybe Bible verses or scripture and make right. them kind of naughty and shit. And I thought that was kind of smart, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Good stuff. Good yeah. stuff. Um, what's another picture? Yeah. So, so now this is what we're doing, Linnell. This is what we're doing. This is how you're moving <laughs> and grooving only. I, I appreciate you. Not you know, only. Yeah, no, come on. It's a lifestyle you want. We yeah. 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 You know, we low budget here. We couldn't afford that. We couldn't afford that bottle in that shit, motherfucker. Okay, that little bottle. Oh, in the that. Yeah. Well. So I appreciate you reaching back and helping me out. Uh, the little people I always Thank try you. to. Oh, you're so kind. You're so yeah. kind. Well, I do a thing called um, uh, spin the wheel with my folks. Oh, I'm my do, God. I'm what I'm that? The they you got, got all these games and right. shit. You're right. You're fucking right. That's what we do here. So here's the did thing. Did you see me on Celebrity Wheel of Fortune, though? I did that, too. Yeah, me and Vanna and Pat Sajak. We That's all enough. friends. That's enough. I played That's for enough. the Make-A-Wish Foundation. That's enough. 30,000 racks. That's enough. Damn. Well, here's the thing. How you lost, if it lands on this, you gotta, we need to talk about it. Okay. How you lost your virginity. Oh. Uh, a celebrity crush call. This is how we do it. I'll t you come up with a celebrity, you know, you have a crush on, and I, you put the phone up. You don't really call him, but you call him. I don't see your acting skills. You gotta either get him to come to your house and give you some booty, or you gotta go to his house and get some booty. You got up to <sighs> two minutes. See how you're macking. I wanna see what your macking's like. I need to see what your macking's like. Let's spin the wheel, go. Uh, all right, all right. Um, tell me you can get off your chest, okay? Um, the biggest lie you ever told, so any of these stories you just told me in the last couple of minutes, you could tell again, repeat. <laughs> if you could change place with anybody, who and why, okay? What's more important to you, teeth, uh, face, teeth, or booty? Well, that's more of a man, so I have a dick. So face, teeth, or dick? If you had to lose one. Me, you... if I had to no, lose? No, 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 for a guy. Is his face more important? Is his teeth most important? Or is his dick more important? Which one of those, if it lands there, you got to tell and tell me why? It's what's most, that, you, that you could live without. That you could live without. Okay? Okay. So yeah, but see what happens. You got fucked up TV, you still live with him, you got a big dick, or no, no, no. All right, so that's how it goes. So, um, and um, that's it. How you, yeah, how you respect, <laughs> whatever the fuck. Where did you get a motherfucking wheel? Uh, yeah, oh, oh, okay. That's what I want to know, nigga. <laughs> so, I want a wheel for Christmas. Get, 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 let's get I'm going to put some applause. shit on there, too. Right, Eat my pussy for an hour. Really? Push my titties together and really? suck them over at the same time. I'm going to change that. The huh? little nail, the little nail I want a motherfucking wheel. Okay, okay. I need a wheel. Can well, y'all give me a wheel? Yeah, we'll get you a wheel. I got all wheel. kind of shit I want to put on my wheel. Spin this wheel with your, with your wheel. Okay, okay. Let's okay. see what you will come to. Woo! Who would, who would you change places with and why? If you had a chair, you know, you know, love a life. You say, I wonder who I would change places with, and why would you change places with that person? So who would think of everybody, anybody you could think of, male or female? But I'm gonna go with female. Ashanti. Change. You would change your life with Ashanti, yeah. and what? What would you? What would be different? What would you do? <laughs> if I was packaged in the Ashanti yeah, body, yeah, like her and had her little talent, yeah, right? You know what? Uh, oh. I don't mean little child. I mean, you know, if I had a little package. And right. I just think she's a great girl and she's fun and I like her laugh and she's talented and she got it. She writes and right. all that stuff. And what would yeah. you do? Would you would you be, would you gotten away from the boys quicker? Irv Gotti, you know what I'm talking about? Them crazy niggas and shit. Or would you stay? Well, if I was Ashanti with my mind, Irv Gotti would have never got me in the first place. Oh, wow. at Oakland, she went. Ooh. Okay now, okay. <laughs> I mean, um, let me give you my, my part. We, get, we have parting gifts on this damn show, sister. Oh okay? my God. Yes, we have parting gifts. <laughs> we, we, we normally had that motherfucker in a bag, but we don't have it in a bag. Saying, I fuck oh, it. you can't afford an Uber. I know you ain't got no bag. Oh, God damn, girl. You're, man, <laughs> we got to do a lot of cutting out. We're doing a lot of cutting on this goddamn show. You better add this whole thing. You, normally, I have I'm a sorry. grab bag. I ain't got a grab bag. So here's a book of mine. I want this book, actually. 
Yes, okay. and I almost bought this back uh, when you first put it out okay. uh, about forty years ago. What's this? And, um, Wait. No, because you <laughs> no. got you got you spill the tea up and you got dirt up in there. Well, I, I got like little it. good stuff. But in you there, got yeah. lots of yeah, you got well, lots I mean, of lot good of people. You, you did. I know. You in the next version. You in the one hundred and one. Oh, Jesus Christ. Okay. You you can miss me. No, I ain't missing. No, no, fuck that. I got you now. <laughs> All right. A, a couple of my my saying. Put it in the comments, everybody. Put it in the comments. So always tell people put it in the comments. I'll drink out of this with my titties hanging on my Instagram live at home when I'm looking like shit. As you are supposed to. Shit. <laughs> And here's an official shirt. And I got you a little bit bigger shirt. I hope so. I was going to say, is that a 2X? No, no, because you wear the moo-moos around the house and stuff. I need you to wear this flex. I don't around. own a moo-moo. Okay, what do you call them shit you I wear? have caftgans. Is that what we call it, caftgans? Yes. All right, caftgans. You know the difference between a motherfucking moo-moo? They look like the Hawaiian moo No. Well, you know what I'm talking about. I don't know. Hey, the ca okay, problem. she got a caftgan. She got a moo-moo. Well, well this motherfucker is going to be a shirt shirt, okay? <laughs> so however you want to call it. So here's one official... Uh, you Thank know, you. This is of, sexy with no panties on yeah, as ooh, well. What you gonna do with oh, that? Oh, now this is the good. Uh, I don't do bullshit, boo boo. Okay, this is the good. Um, Thank you. T-shirt, uh, soft stuff that I like. Uh, right. I, we oh, save, actually, we save this, on the yeah. Uber to buy T-shirts. <laughs> okay. <Hello. laughs> oh. <laughs> <laughs> now, Linnell, thank you so much for coming by. You are a sweetheart, and I really appreciate it. You know. Um, you know, years ago, we had a misunderstanding. I'm going to be real. We had a misunderstanding. I didn't know what was happening. And you told me one day you pulled me to the side in Atlanta, I mean, in Arizona. It was like, Pete, this is what I thought. I never have any ill feel towards you. Whatever you said, I said. You said I said it, I said it. But I got nothing but love for you. And I'm happy for your career. And I really mean that. I really Thank cheer you. for you. And I'm not just it's saying so, it. Uh, it's so touching when you're really sincere, Pierre. Wow. And no, yeah. and I do, I do, I do believe, yeah. believe you sincere in what you said. And thank you. And I'm, I'm glad to be here at the Panic Room. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. you guys support this nigga because you know light skinned niggas is insecure and shit. Oh, and they need God. support. Damn. What? What? Man, why are you doing it to my. Yeah, why you, yeah people laughing at me. That's no. bullshit. I'm, I'm trying my to get you some they, fucking followers. Because I'm insecure, you ain't shit. <laughs> Got that insecure my ass and shit. Well, Linnell, thank you for being so secure to talk shit on my show about me. Some bullshit, you know what I mean? It's but all love, baby. I know it is. Give, it's give, all love. Give those people a shout out where, you, where they can follow you at. Okay, um, my Instagram is at Lunell, at L U E N E L L. You can hit me in the DMs. I do write back, but give me some time because ever since my OnlyFans has mm. taken off my DMs, it's popping, and I just have too many to go through on a daily basis, but I will get to you because I do read them all. And then my OnlyFans is Official Lunel. I think it's Lunel Official. It's, you know, try one of those, and then you'll <laughs> see my booty and, 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 and um, lavender, and then that's me. And if you want to know the dates and places that I'm going to be, you can go to heylunel.com, H-E-Y-L-U-E-N-E-L-L.com, and you can get merchandise and ticket info nice. and all that kind of stuff. It's going to be a big 2023 for you. I'm excited for this year. It's going to look great for you, as normal. Um, uh, you got a couple of hidden projects you said. You wouldn't say that. Netflix. Okay, okay, you can't even send them my damn. But, we'll um, see how that goes. Out. Yeah, yeah, we'll see how it goes. You yeah. deserve one, and I think you're going you know, to you're gonna shine. So Thank uh, you. Thank you so much for really coming through, young lady. You thank know what I'm saying? you. I don't got the zip. I ain't got the followers you got, so you're going to have to help me. You know what I'm saying? I got a little don't small followers worry. and shit. But, we'll take our photos, yeah. and we'll do what we I will do. promote it on my little meager that. Social media. Me, really? With the meager? I have my few little followers. and. <laughs> Hi. Yo, Linnell, before we go, I got this segment called Five for Five. It's where I take a, a comedian that I think that was dope and should um, get a little more love, a little more play. And I gave him a chance to get uh, do stand-up and get on my show for five minutes. So they do five minutes of stand-up and five minutes of sit-down. We talk about their lives. Like a little miniature version of my show. So uh, check this person out. Let's see who we got here. Five for five. She tours with T.I., so you know she ain't no joke. Uh. Well, I hope she's a joke. <laughs> Very funny. I think you ladies are going to like it. Strap on your uh, Brazils and your... Is this like Brazils? And bras. Your bras and uh, draws and all that stuff. Give it up for the one and only Miss E. Duchess!
They got me out here. How many people from my lap? Where's Jane? Clap it up. Clap it up. Yeah, yeah, I love my city, man. Everybody, everybody always be like, where you from? Like, what part of land you from? I be like, yeah, well. Right. My mom's stay getting put out. <laughs> But dating is hard in Atlanta, ain't it? Can you agree with me? It's yeah. hard. You might wake up not even trying to be gay and be gay and broke. <laughs> Y'all know what Atlanta women in Atlanta, we saw a girl that just walked up to hey, can I eat your pussy? I'm like, girl, you talking about this one? Right. I was like, who told you something? Right. I had on turn to that thinking emoji. I was like. <laughs> I said, well, she eat me, Lord, that's on her, not me. She the one going to hell for this shit. <laughs> this shit just on her, man. I've been trying to date them all, try to date this little young nigga. You got down 20 on her, love. Y'all know I'm got down for her. Real young nigga had me doing all kind of crazy shit up there trying to fight, knowing I ain't, you know what I'm saying, with all. But shit, these young girls, they ain't with this shit. I was at the gas station, pumping my gas, minding my bin. This girl just come up to me. She like, what's up, bitch? What's up? I like, what is she doing? I'm like, what is this? Y'all know I'm old school. I'm like, shit, bitch, we can't go around each other's shoulder first. <laughs> I just got out of work, coach. <laughs> she was like, how long are you going to be out there? She said, I'm trying to fry this chicken, coach. <laughs> you under the hell, man. Hey, you doing all kind of crazy shit you ain't trying to do, but you trying to act like you still with it. Like Snapchat, you pussy. <laughs> He like Snapchat me that little pussy. I said, oh, okay, I'll do it. I Snapchat the choo-choo. <laughs> Ma'am, I don't know why my spirit was talking to you when I said that, but um when I showed it to him, showed it to my cousin before I, you know, before I posted the picture, she was like, bitch, you gotta shave. <laughs> I don't know what my spirit was saying then, but um, so I had him shave my shit for the first time, y'all. Everything was just gone. I mean, I shaved everything, everything just gone. I walk around, I'm lighting for. I ain't know. I was tiptoeing. I felt so loud. I'm like, what the hell? So, you know, I had to, you know, I want to look at it again. I thought I'm shaving this shit. I was snap the picture and I looked up at it. I was like, oh, my pussy ugly. I said, In the picture, I'm like, bro, you don't even want to see this. This shit hard, though, kind of I got kids, though. Y'all got kids in here? Anybody got kids? I love my kids. I love my kids. But raising these kids ain't it different nowadays? It's different because we ain't had access to our parents the way these kids got access to us. You know, like my little girl, you know. She, I got to keep up with all the lingo that she be sending me, you know, the LOL, the OMG, you know, all that shit like that, right? So the other day, my little girl, she texted me. She was like, Mama, can I go skating with my friends? I said, no, because you did not clean up your room. She texted me back, B-H-H-S. I said, well, now what the hell that mean? Because the only thing I came up with was bald head whole shit. <laughs>
used to do my mama Jeanette, right? My mama got six kids, right? And we all got our own daddy and own woman. <laughs> First of all, I man, that is not a joke. <laughs> anyway, my mama used to leave us in the house. Y'all be gone the whole weekend. She get the fuck on. Don't nobody say nothing. We be in that bitch starving like hell. But you know, we know how to survive. You know, you know, eat a little mayonnaise sandwich, serve sandwich, ketchup sandwich. It was something. We gon' got them lit. So I tried to do the same thing with my birthday. So I had a went somewhere extravagant, bitch, real big, you know, out of state of Atlanta. So, <laughs> bitch, I went to Miami for my birthday. I'm balling. I had them got me a yacht, cause y'all know I'm still balling a little bit. You know, for my PPP loan or whatnot. <laughs> so I'm on the yacht, I'm dancing. I be my birthday hoe. Doing it for the ground. So you know you're doing this stuff for the ground. What you gotta do? You gotta post your picture. Then when you post your picture, what? You gotta read the comments. I'm reading the comments. Bitch, you cute. Girl, you doing that? Next comment. Mama, we home. <laughs> to working with T.I. and now it's packed, is it a, was it a different feeling, a change that you like, some people can't handle that, you know what I'm saying? That, that, that's a major change from, you know, 30, 40 people in the club and a fucking hot wing spot to an official situation. Yeah, <laughs> you know? it didn't quite go like, it didn't quite go okay. like okay. that. Okay. Okay. It go I there? mean, well, um, well, actually, like, before Tilt, I, had, I was on tour with Duval. Oh, I didn't yeah, say that. Yeah, yeah, I was on tour with Duval. Yeah, yeah. Okay. And actually, before Duval, I all did 3,000 rooms before because I was in, like, uh, I don't know if you ever heard of Ratchet People Meet. We used to do the show. Yeah yeah, 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 yeah. We did that, so we already did, um, uh, what is what is downtown? Uh, um, we already did the Fox. Fox we already right. did, um, Oh, wow. I'm, I'm late to you. Yeah, yeah, yeah you were just late. Oh, yeah, yeah. My bad. Yeah. My bad. I'm not, my bad. Yeah, and I just did stay for a rainer, like, yeah. 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 Funny 
family, you know, the, 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 you said you said your mama had how many ten kids? My mama got six kids, and, and we right. all do got our own daddy. Really? Except for the last two. <laughs> that thing thing's right, right. I guess so. I mean, I got three. <laughs> well, that thing thing follow up. Oh, the whole family got the right thing thing. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so I heard your mom was funny. She was funny. She said, uh, Christmas, you told me a story one time, kind of funny. I can go with the whole story, but you got a big box. Because then when you're kids, when you have the biggest box underneath the tree, you feel feeling good about yourself. Yes. What did your mother do? How did your mother do? How'd she, how'd she do yes, that? so you know, she got six kids. We always have a big Christmas. Always. Okay. So you know, I had like this big old box. It's probably like from up here. Right. So everybody, Ooh. I'm like, I'm. Think I'm feeling special and shit. Right, all right. my brothers and sisters cutting their eyes at me. Right. They wonder why, how the hell I get this big old yeah. box. And I, I'm, I can't wait. You know, Christmas come, I can't wait to open right. it and right. stuff right. like that. So I open the box. When nice. I open the box, it was another box. Oh, okay, I get that. Then when I opened that box, right. it was another box. Oh, oh. The box is getting smaller and smaller <laughs> as I open. Okay. Diamond ring might be in there. Yeah, that's Diamond. what I think. I'm like, oh yeah. shit, bracelet or something. <laughs> okay. Tears, that band doing that time was like tennis bracelets. Okay, and shit like okay, that. okay. And so when I got to that box, another box. So when I got to the smallest box, it nice. was a, it was a brand new belt. <laughs> yeah, she said that was for your bad ass. I had mama say. Yeah, Jeanette Hill. Jeanette Hill. Yeah. 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 That's funny. That's funny. Yeah. My father was like that too. My father gave me two, two gifts. I have two boxes or whatever. Oh my God, I got two boxes, two boxes. <laughs> one with the electronic toy, the other one be batteries. Yeah. <laughs> you got the batteries up there, you know what I'm saying? One time she got me some Patrick Ewing, but they came from okay. Family Dollar. Oh, shit. Patrick Ewing? Did you wear them with the shirt? Yeah, yeah, for me. Hell no. For me, you wear them with the shirt? Hell no. That's kind of cool. That's kind of cool that uh, you know we can make fun of stuff that we went through as a kid. You know, some stuff that we didn't really come up with the, the best. of sometimes I unfortunately was blessed with you know parents that took care of me really well, so I, I had a lot of good shit. So, but I like to hear other people who are striving, striving. That's what the fuck? That's a real life skin shit. <laughs> I like hood females. I'm be honest with you. I'm gonna tell you one major reason why. Because mm. hood females, you said that picture we had to check, carry that book. I like women with hair down there. Yeah. And hood rat, hood girls like to have hair down there. Yeah. Of course. Yeah. I'm like, okay. It's a woman booty bitches right now, shave all that off, looking like the surface of the moon and shit. Oh. You got that? Your picture. Okay? It's all folded. Man, shit. go ahead. Oh. Put a fur coat on that motherfucker. <laughs> Yeah, man, I'm there. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Gotta give you that, you know, gotta give you that light skin face all day long. Come on. Uh, 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 right now. That's what you can do with that. I don't know what you gonna do with this. What would you do with this? Okay. Oh, uh, what I'm gonna do with this? A do-rag at nighttime? And my shit won't even open. <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. Yes, you know what I'm saying? Let me look at it. Let me see what my spirit is. Yeah, yeah. Oh, oh, oh. What is, oh, here we go. Yeah. <laughs> Tell me now, what your spirit is. Let's see what my spirit is. My spirit told me in the arm. Um, what you gonna do with it? Oh, shit. Just you do when I shave. Oh, shit. Okay. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, you want the ball like this, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah that's that's inspiration. Right, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> hey, where can people reach you at, Dutchie? Where you can, can reach, reach me on Instagram at Erica, E R I C A, Duchess, D U C H E S S. And for my older people, you can follow me on Facebook at Erica. <laughs> Erica S. Duchess. And I'm on Twitter as um, Duchess Erica number one. There it is. Give it one more time for Erica.
five for five. Five for five. Five for five. Five for five. Cool. <laughs> I told you. Follow. Okay, follow this comic. Please follow, okay? Thank, thank you so much for, uh, for watching PS Panic Room. Another dope episode. I have my girl Lunel. Like I said, it's dope as hell. Check it out, y'all. 2023, we going all the way to the top, y'all. Thanks for supporting the love. Like I said, 100,000 followers. We're coming up on Let's do this. We out. Hey, everybody. It's me, Lunel, the original bad girl of comedy, and I survived. Piers panic room. Turn me up a little bit. Turn me up a little bit. Mm. If you like that show, like, subscribe, and comment below. You know, hit the, hit the notification bell the subscribe button man we want you around appreciate it